Tomorrow, players can start jumping into X Defiant once again here as a part of the early open beta session with the entirety of the open beta opening up on Tuesday. But today, I wanted to take some time in the final moments here before all the gameplay starts to run down some of the biggest changes confirmed and coming for this play session from the closed beta to where we are tomorrow and again as a whole for everyone on Tuesday. So as we go along, drop your thoughts below. What are you looking forward to the most with the upcoming play session for X Defiant? If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay updated with all things X Defiant, Modern Warfare 2, other FPS content here in the future and beyond. I'd love to have in the community. And finally, make sure to check out my friends over at G Fuel for 30% off certain items like hype sauce tubs in the month of June, but more on them a little later. For now, let's jump into it. First and foremost, before I jump into the changes itself, once again, apologies if you're like, I recognize that gameplay. Didn't you just use that one? Because, well, you'd be correct in that. As mentioned a couple of days ago, the gameplay bank here on my end is rather dry, so really looking forward to jumping in tomorrow, grabbing new footage, and restocking on all the footage here that we can use for future videos, but just know that yes, that is the case. But anyways, beyond that, the changes here coming, we actually have a large number of fundamental and core changes to the X Defiant experience. The big focal points of the open session as we talked about in yesterday's Everything You Need to Know, come down to really two things. Of course, like we said, number one, open session means anyone can play. You don't have to pre-register or anything like that. It doesn't limit the amount of players that we could end up seeing here through this beta. More players equals more feedback, more data, and from a data collection perspective, that's a dream. I mean, you can play test the game for days, weeks, months, years on end in-house, but you'll gather so much more in a single few day play test, opening up to the masses like this upcoming open session. That's just the law of numbers here. It may not be as much time, but you're opening up the game and the builds of hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of players that could come through at any point in time. Secondly, the other purpose here of this open session is to give the play test to all the items of importance on a fundamental level that have changed since the closed beta to where we are now. That including new netcode, new server stability, new console controller experiences, input latency adjustments for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 5 controllers, 120 hertz support for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, among other things. So let's break down these as expanded upon by the X Defiant team in a pre-open session blog post. Firstly, let's talk about input latency on PlayStation 5 because this is a good one to start and it's also a segue into another topic that ties in directly with this. But for the input latency, they described during the closed beta, a bug was observed in the frame pacing behavior on PlayStation 5 that led to the game having a higher than expected input latency. The CPU was not properly throttled along it to run too far ahead of the GPU, resulting in approximately an additional 40 milliseconds of undesired latency. Since the closed beta, we have worked to correct that issue, so input latency on PlayStation 5 should feel much more responsive and on par with our other platforms. And of course, 40 milliseconds might not seem like a lot on paper, but in a first-person arcade shooter like this, it could mean the end of a streak or the continuation of a streak that you may be on. But this part is genuinely in regards to the PlayStation 5 input delay. We talked about how the controllers for PlayStation 5 were both creating additional input delay in any use cases for the controllers, whether that be PlayStation 5 controllers on PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 5 controllers controllers on PC. That apparently was corrected in an update though to aim assist of all things. Which in regards to the controller issue firstly, they stated since aiming requires pinpoint accuracy, the reduction in the input latency that we've made since the closed beta should pair nicely with the changes to aim assist so that players will feel less impaired by minor stick corrections when trying to stay on target. So in tandem, those two fixes should hopefully make your entire controller experience more responsive, which is definitely good. I could visibly see the delay when playing on PC with a PS5 controller during the closed beta, so I'm here for that kind of change. Absolutely. Beyond that, paraphrasing a bit here with it, they stated that there were some readjustments to the way the hitboxes for the slowdown on aim worked in aim assist overall, and there was a slight correction to the aim assist strength within two meters in game, which caused this sort of view pull effect unintentionally, where you'd like bounce off a player. Console players also saw, just for correcting, roughly a 5% buff to the aim assist overall, but again, it shouldn't be necessarily too noticeable because, I mean, 5% is relatively minuscule in the grand scheme of things. But anyways, moving past that, we also saw some adjustments to the netcode, server stability, and other stuff like that. So starting with the netcode here, there were no specifics given on changes, but it was detailed that previously in the closed beta and insider sessions, the netcode was an early test version. Since then, we've done a significant overhaul to improve fairness, reduce the latency, and improve synchronization. These changes should help alleviate the feeling of dying behind a wall and covers. The new netcode is a massive refactor and improvement, but is not final. Netcode will always be an important topic that we will continue to improve upon, but for the new netcode, this is the first large-scale test, so it's important to let us know your feedback and experience across the globe. So it's definitely nice that they're pretty open with this. I mean, we've not really ever seen any sort of AAA developer, to my knowledge, talk about hit reg, netcode, that kind of stuff, in a very open, 
public discussion and forum like this. It's definitely nice to see Ubisoft being like, hey, we know that we can always make improvements, but we want to get your feedback on how this feels as opposed to what it was beforehand, which we know wasn't that great. And I definitely think this will be something we see kept up with in terms of discussion, because even during the closed beta, Mark Rubin and other developers were talking openly about how the net code that we had at that point was outdated and they were already working on stuff, but it just would not make it into that play session that we had. So the transparency was there before. I'm expecting it to stay there at the same time. Now, real quickly before we continue, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel for 20% off all items all the time with code Espresso, but 30% off items for the month of June, like the tubs of Hype Sauce, Hibiscus Tea, MS Melon, and more, as well as starter kits. So if you haven't tried G Fuel before, now is as best a time as any now that those starter kits are discounted in those tubs. Can't go wrong with any of those here. Mentioned it before, Hype Sauce is a flavor of choice of mine in a regular rotation. Top three, in my opinion, for sure. So if you guys would like to learn more, check out any tubs, grab a restock, or try something for the very first time, use code Espresso, link in the description below. But that said, let's get back into it. Next, server stability. They stated during the closed beta, we experienced an issue that was preventing matchmaking entirely or causing long lobby times. We have identified and fixed these issues from the closed beta. We've also fixed several low level bugs in our server code that should create a smoother experience overall. Additionally, during the closed beta, we overloaded the save game servers. That was something where players were having trouble ranking up, having things unlocked. So that's where they ended up just switching to saying, screw it, we're going to unlock everything for everybody. And then I think in the tail end of, I want to say like week two, that's whenever they ended up introducing the ranked progression back once again, where we had to get everything re-unlocked once again. So that's what they're referring to with that. But they said, since then, we've done work to scale the servers better. On top of this, we have implemented better reporting that will allow us to catch server issues faster. We also have scaled our online support team to be able to resolve issues quicker. While a massive amount of work has been done, it is still possible that there are server stability issues. However, this is part of the reason we are doing an open session. Please let us know your feedback on the overall experience as we continue to improve server stability at launch and in the future. Then finally, in regards to like larger scale things here in regards to fundamentals, 120 hertz support is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. If I'm not mistaken, that was an option that was visible in the closed beta, but it wasn't actually something that applied 120 hertz support to that. So it was just kind of like a placebo thing, but they've ended up mentioning that we've added 120 hertz for those who are connected to supporting displays. Again, you do need a monitor that supports 120 hertz or more to end up taking advantage of that. If you have a regular 60 hertz monitor or TV, you're not going to be able to see that effects of that. Going further saying this should provide an additional small improvement to the input latency as well as overall more fluid and responsive feel to the game. This mode is still relatively new and undergoing internal review and validation, and there may be places the game is unable to sustain 120 hertz. So you may see some frame drops perhaps, but feedback is very much appreciated. So that's the core fundamentals here that they're going to be testing here with this. But of course, it's not the only things we'll see coming in terms of changes. We also saw a lot of weapon tuning detailed already in this open session blog, where there's a few weapons in particular called out. Others, it's more so just classification based. The snipers, we saw an increase to the ADS time and decrease to the ADS walking speed, both of those being nerfs. The LMGs we saw corrected with their ADS and sprint out times. That's just something that kind of brought it back in line with where it should be. So you could say it's a nerf, you could say it's a buff, it just depends. But honestly, I think that one's just kind of like even keel. The M1911 saw an increase to the RPM, a buff there. The ACR saw a decrease to the RPM and increase to the ADS and sprint out times. Again, nerfs to both of that as well. The AK-47 saw a better aligned bullet trajectory with crosshair placement when aiming down sight, that being a buff and a correction here with that. The MK-20 ended up reducing the headshot multiplier, a nerf, and the P90 saw an increase to the headshot multiplier. So a buff there. So kind of just a roller coaster of emotions here at that in terms of strengthening and weakening some items. But overall, not too terribly much was changed in regards to what you may expect with some of the gunplay. Along with a bunch of different faction abilities and other things on a more back end balancing perspective, we also saw the introduction of new dark flashbang options within the settings menu. So if you're somebody that is sensitive to that bright light, if you do get flashbanged, instead of it going bright white, it'll go to a fade to black. So it won't be as hard on your eyes, which is definitely nice. I really like that in terms of accessibility features. The other big thing that we saw here, though on paper, again, may seem kind of small, is health regen. We saw the delay in health regen reduced from five seconds now down to four. So whereas oppositely with Warzone, we recently saw that that was increased from five to seven seconds, you're actually going to gain your health back faster here with an X Defiant from the closed beta to the open beta session upcoming. But that said, that is the big changes here you can expect from if you've played the closed beta a couple of months ago to where we are starting tomorrow and into the open session fully on Tuesday. So just wanted to fill you guys in, keep you in the loop with everything and let you know all you needed to here ahead of the upcoming open beta. So that said, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like these changes here being made to the game
gameplay experience itself. Maybe not so much. What are the case? Drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay with all things X Defiant in the open beta here, Modern Warfare 2, other FPS content in the future. What are the case? I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.